Waiting, waiting, waiting. Welcome back, everybody. Episode number four, Pink Bike Academy behind the scenes. Let's dive straight into it. But first, unfortunately, I wanted to wear my funny hat, but gotta lose it. Because I need headphones to do this. Okay, now let's dive right in. Last time on Pink Bike Academy, presented by Shimano, the contestants put their style and creativity to the test with a GoPro photo challenge. That was so sick! While some thrived, others faltered, and Angie, Joe, and Tom found themselves at the bottom. With one last chance to redeem themselves, Angie and Joe stepped up, but unfortunately for Tom, it wasn't his day. This time, the contestants will be pushed to the absolute limit in two back-to-back -back fitness challenges. They'll test who has the power and who has the speed. Push the pedal to the floor. This week's good. This week plays pretty closely into my strengths, I would say. Although I wasn't in super great shape going in fitness-wise, but should play into my strengths a little bit. So epic. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, one piece. <laughs> Walking in and uh, seeing those tax trainers was a bit um, nerve-wracking. Oh, I man. Hate <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why? Definitely realized that we were going to be entering the pan cave. No. <laughs> no. Some of us were not excited to see the trainers because we knew it's going to be painful, but I was pretty stoked to try it. Riders, today, is going to hurt. <laughs> We've got your Orbea bikes hooked up to Tax Neo 2T smart trainers, and we're going to do an FTP ramp test. I don't know if people really knew what they were getting into. <sighs> oh, so that reaction comes just completely from my hatred of FTP tests of all shapes and sizes. There's lots of different styles of it. Usually I do a one minute, five minute, 20 minute all out, but the way we're gonna do it here is slightly different and more uh, TV show appropriate. Myself, my heart sank to the floor right off the bat. I knew exactly what was going on. Good thing I've never done You guys one. have no idea what you're in for. <laughs> <laughs> you got a bucket for me? <laughs> because I'm going till I throw up. <laughs> You will need to pedal and maintain the terrible foreshadowing the Garmin head units terrible for foreshadowing. as long as possible. As time goes on, the power you need to produce will increase. But to keep things fair, we're gonna base your results off your power to weight ratio. The winner of this challenge will receive an advantage for the next challenge. Everyone understand? Take a few deep breaths and step into the pain cave. The contestants are performing an FTP ramp style test, and we're doing that with the help of our Garmin Edge 530 and the Tax Neo 2T Smart Train. So uh, a funny behind the scenes note here. Actually, the first trainer I got on and started doing the warm up and started doing the warm up and the watts never increased. They never went up like they were supposed to. So I kept pedaling and then brought it to Christina's attention that it wasn't working and she got on the bike and was like I don't know it feels like it's working okay I was like it's not working like it's supposed to I've ridden a lot of trainers before in the past so I knew what it was supposed to do and it wasn't doing it so we got another trainer I rode it for like five minutes and couldn't get it to do what it was supposed to do something was missing between the head unit and the trainer itself they just weren't talking very well together so the ramp test is designed that you go up a certain amount of watts. It's like a staircase. The watts keep going up and up. The great thing about using these type of trainers is that you have what's called an ERG mode. So between the computer on your bike and the computer inside of the trainer itself, the two talk to each other and it forces you to ride at a specific watts to keep going or a specific power number to keep going. So as the numbers on your screen increase, let's say it's we started at 180 watts, it's going to force you to turn 180 watts on the trainer to keep going. 
and as it steps up that wattage increases and it forces you to pedal that well as i was pedaling i was pedaling as fast as i could and the watts just weren't going up so something was wrong fortunately they had a third trainer actually the trainer that christine is riding in this video here was her trainer and i used that one and finally we got it to work properly i was very excited because i so wanted to do this um I don't know if you can sense the sarcasm. Trainer. These smart trainers are awesome because you can hook them up at home, work out anytime, and you can just connect it to your phone, your watch, or in our case, this handy little head unit. FTP stands for functional threshold power, and put simply, it's a measurement of how hard a rider can ride over one hour. We use this test to track improvements in fitness on and off the bike. We're gonna start with a that is a very, very rough translation of what functional threshold power or an FTP number is. I could get this slightly wrong, and if I do, please feel free to blow me up in the comment section below, but functional threshold power is actually the amount of power you are able to produce before your body tips over a point of not being able to remove lactate from your muscles. Lactic acid is commonly referred to as that burning sensation when you're really, really going hard. Well, your body at one point, at a certain heart rate slash certain power number, stops being able to remove that and you start to go anaerobic where you're no longer pushing oxygen through your muscles. You're just building up lactate. And at that tipping point is where you can no longer sustain it. You might be able to for a certain amount of time, but over an endurance period of time or a long period of time, you will not be able to sustain it and you also are unable to recover. So it's good to know that number. The actual test you would do is you'd ride a ramp style test like this, but then you would prick your finger and you'd get your lactate levels checked every, when I did it, I was doing it every minute. So you could see when that spike was and that spike was your tipping point once you you're on a nice smooth line and then all of a sudden it just ramped up and spiked that is when your body stops being able to remove that lactate therefore that is your functional threshold power that is what you base the majority of your endurance training off of okay enough rambling back in a 20 minute warm up and then the tax trainer is going to increase the difficulty every minute just like with light bulbs we're using wattage to measure power so the higher the watt, the brighter the light bulb, or in this case, the stronger the rider. But to keep things fair, we're gonna incorporate their weight. So we're measuring power versus weight. The goal is to hold the suggested wattage until the riders can no longer function. That number will be referred to as watts per kilogram by most cyclists. You use kilograms because it's a more generic, sorry, I know a lot of my subscribers are in the US, so, Kilograms is the standard for the majority of the world besides you US folks. So you do watts per kilogram and it's a percentage slash ratio number that you base a lot of training off of. Everyone fails this test. It's just a matter of how long they last. All right, riders, just before you get started, I did want to mention we have a nice bucket here. If you feel the need, just puke right in it. It's communal, everyone's together, it's nice. <laughs> With that out of the way, is everyone ready? Gross. Yep, yep. All right, begin the warm up. Today's judges are Christina Chapetta, who is no stranger to the pain cave, and she is joined by Fabien Cousinet, who's been racing for many years, and as a team manager, he has a keen eye for talent. They will be judging the riders' results, as well as their effort and attitude. So, Addison, what's your guess? Why are you gonna stop? One minute pulls. My goal is 450. 450. Yeah. Should we tell him what your, one of your best results was in your heyday? Um, my best was uh, 440. Okay. <laughs> okay. The number we're referring to is not your actual FTP number because if he were to have a 440 functional threshold power, he would be a world tour cyclist. That's, that's an incredibly high number. That is the number that we're referring to of when you tap out and you can no longer go any further. That was a common misconception for a lot of people. Was They were asking me if I got the number that we got to as an FTP. 
no, that was just where I tapped out. The FTP, when you're not doing it based off of your literal lactate levels, you are doing it as a percentage of your highest number where you failed at. In the case of this test, and I believe it was, I believe correct FTP is approximately 95% of your 20 minute max effort. Uh, I don't know the calculation for a one minute ramp test. I've never done this short of a ramp test before. So in that case, I'm not sure what the mathematics work out to, but the number we're referring to is not our actual functional threshold power because that would be the best of the best in the world if you're hitting that number. <laughs> also, I didn't like his smirky laugh at the end of there. He's French, so I gotta give it to him there, but 440 is, it's an enduro athlete, like racing enduro mountain bikes is much different than the efforts that I'm used to doing, where I'm used to riding a bike for 10 to 12, 13 hours at a time. My endurance is, well, not during the time of this challenge, because I haven't done a gravel race in a long time, but my endurance number should be better. My FTP should, in theory, be better because I am riding closer to my FTP at all times, which is bumping it up, where he does spikes and valleys of high power output. He's not doing two to three hour sustained efforts. He's doing 15 to 20 minutes on long stages. So it's a different type of power number and definitely a, a different takeaway from what your FTP is number. So 440 is, for an enduro athlete, it's probably great. But if you're like a true endurance athlete, tapping out at 440 is, it's nothing that special. Hand on button. Okay, in three, two, one, go. Ooh, Evan, tarps off. Tarps off. <laughs> All right. Oh, baby. And he's ready. <laughs> Wish I could pedal with my hands. I think on more cardio-based <laughs> challenges like this, being more heavy set muscular wise like Vlad might be a slight disadvantage. How are you feeling? Pretty terrible. The FTP test was interesting because I never done this kind of a training. All right, there she goes. Up, up, up. There we go. It's getting really real. I was uh, feeling like I was gonna pass out and I guess maybe I even partly did. Hey, 15 seconds, come on. You get it, you're not gonna stop now. Yeah, I think Vlad definitely struggled because he's never ridden a trail bike or been on a train or anything. Three, two, one. Push, Vlad, push. Uh, my muscle does not mate for this kind of training. There we go, come on. Vlad, hey, you're not sweating yet. It started getting like, The one thing I just noticed was that they have the heart rate numbers on there. Those numbers are not, not accurate at all. Just to give you a reference, none of us are wearing proper heart rate monitors. Yes, the, the Garmin watches we were wearing did take heart rate, but not a very accurate number, especially not for an activity like this. So if you notice, none of us are wearing heart rate straps. The numbers were kind of just for fun dark on the side of my eyes. But I was like, keep pedaling, even when it was getting dark, I was like, kind of like out and I was like, whoa, like what? It was just like so much pain, but it was like, kind of like coming and going as well as like, just like the reality around. This is it? Yeah. All right, stop it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any kind of like cardio or this intense nonstop is destroying the muscle. This is not good for my, modeling career, which is the way to afford mountain biking. So it's like tricky, tricky situation. <laughs> All right, this is gonna get hard. We're gonna start seeing some people tap out. Go as long as you can. If you're blacking out, raise your hand. We'll come over to you and help you push stop. 
So during the test, you are definitely getting into this um, anaerobic uh, stage. You're looking good, stay relaxed, drop your shoulders. You slowly start to lose your breathing and then just like close into tunnel vision and then slowly your legs will start hurting as well and the lactic acid will build up. All the way, girl, pedal it out, up the hill. Big, strong legs. It hurts, but it is a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun to test your limits. Okay. My goal was not a number, but to push through my mental weakness and try to find some hidden energy in myself. And I think uh, I, uh, it went well. After this minute, it's gonna be a punch. So to reference, to reference what both of them are talking about, Vlad talking about like tunneling in and that's a very real thing when you're properly doing an FTP test. When you're really on that high limit, starting to get tunnel vision and starting to black out is a very, very real thing. Uh, and it can be a bit scary if you've never done it before. Like all of a sudden things just start going dark and you start losing vision. And, uh, you start to get a little taste of blood in your mouth. It's a, it's a scary place to be if you've never been there. Uh, I highly commend him on the effort that he did put out for this. Granted, he got out first out of everybody, but still, he's, like you said, he's not physically designed himself or physically structured himself to do an event like this. Pretty impressive to see him do it and to be able to push in as far as he did. To Misha's point, it is a lot about mental barriers, so you'll be doing this type of test and it hurts and it hurts and it's terrible and you don't want to do it anymore and then as soon as you stop 30 seconds later you feel 95 percent again you're like i don't did i go hard enough like it ends so quickly and you fall off of that peak that you're you just question yourself did i go far enough your mental almost always quits before your physical does if you can mentally push past your physical then you make an exceptional athlete because that is very, very difficult. And that's what makes the difference between a lot of really great athletes and okay athletes is that mental barrier and it being able to push past in training. To the gut. I'm gonna need a Ben. Ben needs a bucket. Yeah, you know, I asked for the throw up Ben mid FTP test today. Only because I just wanted to make other people think I was done. You good, man? Because I actually didn't even feel close to throwing up. The fact that you guys ask me these questions sometimes, it just disappoints me. I don't know why anyone ever to doubt me. Oh, I'll leave this right here for you. Yeah, I'm the biggest puppet master in the game. So Ben went with a very interesting strategy to this. Instead of the majority of us, earlier I said that the trainers make you ride at a specific watts. Well, when you're using the, the head unit that they gave us, it actually has a fluctuation of, I think, 20 or 30 watts. It's like a percentage fluctuation. And you can either ride very smooth and consistent at a, at a consistent RPM and keep it right in that middle where you, the number you're supposed to be at. And that's what I did and I believe that's what Evan did. Ben took it a completely different approach and rode at the high end of the watts that you were supposed to be at. So when we were all riding at 380, he was probably riding in the 390 to 395 range. He got up to the higher watts in the test quicker than we did. I don't know how that played out. Like, I don't know if it was a, a benefit or a negative. I'd be interested to see the science behind that and also like the mathematics side of things. Um, but it was just a, a different strategy that I heard him talking about actually before that he was just going to go all out from the beginning and give it everything. Uh, and it seems like it worked pretty well. I mean, he was riding what it said, like, 390 or so? What was it? Good job. 375. For Ben's weight, 375 is very, very impressive. I think he was almost 10 pounds lighter than me. When we did this, 
I was at 162 pounds and he was at 154, 53. I don't remember exactly, but we were about 10, 10 pounds difference, which is huge in watts per kilogram. Oh, buddy. I'll leave this right here for you. Yeah, I'm the biggest puppet master in the game, baby. Three, two, one, stand up. Stand up for this one, as long as you can. Yeah, the test was definitely interesting. <sighs> Pedal it out, up the hill. Big, strong legs. As the minutes go by, your legs slowly start to burn more. You got a bit more, you got a bit more in the tank. Good job, keep it going, keep it going. As it started ramping up every minute, you'll start feeling your legs, your lungs, and then even like your mental capacity. You're in that target, you're still in that target. Your vision's blurry, you're like dripping sweat, your legs feel like you can't even spin them anymore. Strong finish all the way, every second counts. <sighs> That is the truest statement of this contest. And then every eventually, second like, you don't even want to stop, but you're just like, your body quits. And stop. <sighs> no. Oh. Oh, Here you go. Yeah, I was pretty happy with my results. Julia was I had a goal very impressive in reaching this. 250 watts, and I made a bit above that, so I was pretty happy with my performance. Come on, you wanted to get to 440 so, or more. Let's do it. Addison, last man standing. He is hurting right now. It hurts so good. Good job, boy. 15 seconds. So the physical feeling in the test starts off very mellow, and then once you cross your lactate threshold, everything goes downhill. Come on, you know you want to go to the next level. Come on, Addison, let's go. Your legs start to light on fire, and then your eyes start rolling in the back of your head. You feel like you want to vomit, and you basically stay there until you absolutely can't take it. Breathe a little, breathe a little. So here is a big note on doing a test like this. You can actually be good at taking a test of this sort. One, practice, like doing it, being used to being in that red zone definitely helps a lot but also mentally remembering to breathe, remembering to keep your body relaxed. If you see my face in this, how squinted I am and how much pain I look like I'm in, that unfortunately is wasted effort. Anytime you are tensing up or even if it's just your face structure, when you're tensing up, you're using muscles that you don't need to be using. I've always been a very bad FTP test taker um, I'm much better actually performing in a race than I am in a test, which unfortunately doesn't play very well for, <laughs> for doing a test as a contest. Um, but I definitely screwed that up. If I would have stayed more relaxed longer, I think I would have gone just marginally further. Hello. And then you tap out oh. and that's your FTP test. And I also should have stood up just this much longer. When you feel like you're dead, you can almost always stand up and grind. I really wish that I would have dug down and just gotten five, six, seven more pedals. If I would have just stood up and just put my head down and grinded it out, I think I could have gotten a little further and produced a little higher number. I think I gave up too early in this and that is a showing of mental weakness from not being on the bike for a long time and not doing a test like this for a long time and not being at that huge high effort in a long time. So uh, definitely some mental weakness here. I could have gone further physically, but my mind tapped out much earlier than my legs should have or would have. I don't know about you, I'm exhausted, and we need a little break. The judges are <clears throat> gonna take your garments and tally the results, and we'll get them back to you as soon as we can. You guys crushed it, I'm so impressed. Okay, yeah, nice job everybody, <laughs> staying in it. I was not necessarily expecting to be the, the number one. I, I wanted to put up the highest number, but in relation to body weight, I wasn't 100% sure. Ben's fairly lighter than me, and Ben is an extremely strong athlete, as well as Julia performed extremely well, and she's a very low body weight. So when you start doing percentages, it's really hard to tell who's it gonna be. 
Good work. You too. I heard uh, I Julia to breathing, it. and then yeah. I was like, okay. It we started really fast. I was like chilling, and then like oh, yeah. it got like thought... up like past 200, and I was like, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> but you know when you can like feel something going like this? I just wanted like, it in case. Is that the last thing I wanted was to throw up on the floor? Yeah. Oh, hey. That one would hey. be pretty funny. It made good TV actually. Riders, amazing job this morning. Seriously, you all crushed it in part one of today's challenge. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention today's challenge is a two-parter. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> when Jason told us that we had a second part of the challenge, I definitely knew it was coming, so I wasn't actually too surprised. For part two of today's challenge, we're gonna do another one-stage race with a twist. We will be timing the descent and the climb. Oh. We, I think all of us were pretty shocked because we were quite tired. Today's stage will take you all the way up Big White Bike Park. When he says there that you'll be timed up and down, that means it's an entire time from the time you leave the start line to the time you pass the finish line. It's not like a typical enduro where you have a time block to get to the top, then you just have to drop before your time comes or at your time slot. This was an accumulative time from the start line up the mountain, over the crest of the mountain and back down to the finish line. That was something that we actually had to ask clarification on. They weren't super specific on it. so. We did have to ask and get clarification on that, and yes, it was that accumulative time, which is a huge element to the challenge. And then down Nessie, a relatively easy trail, <laughs> oh. but pretty physical. Yes. Nessie is a green flow trail with almost zero jumps, tons of turns, and lots and lots and lots of pedal room. Just what you want after a crushing uphill stage. I actually got slightly excited because I thought it was going to be a really good chance to flush out the lactic acid. The results from this morning's challenge will be tallied with the race and we'll just... Sorry, I don't mean to keep butting in here, but to give you a reference of what I'm talking about there, if you do a huge effort like this, as I said earlier, you're going past that lactate threshold. So you're building up all this lactate in your muscles. And if you just stop instantly, like basically what we did, you end up retaining the majority of that lactate in your muscles. So if you get back out or you keep pedaling for a while, you use your body's natural flushing system that will actually flush out some of that lactate and help you recover better. Therefore, you'll be able to continue on in the week and challenges much better. So that's what I meant when I said that I was actually excited about it being able to flush out. The one thing I didn't take into account when I said that was that we're just gonna be building more lactate on the way up. Decide on a winner and who's going home today. I was hoping for a downhill race, but then he was like, oh, it's like a full in cross country race. And I was like, oh, well, I'll just do my best and see how it goes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone, you ready for this? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, before we get started, I did mention that the winner of the tax challenge would receive an advantage in the next challenge. And that person is Ben. Ooh. Yeah, ben. As the winner, you may choose one contestant to give a two minute time penalty to oh. for this race. That's savage. <laughs> Yeah, being on the spot for choosing someone was definitely a little bit of pressure. Oh, I don't want to be mean. I just felt bad. I didn't really want to give anyone a time penalty, but yeah, had to be done. Who do you choose? Just do it, Ben. I know exactly who it's going to. Ben kind of hesitated, but I knew it was coming from me, so at one point I was like, Ben, just say the name. We all know what it is. Just let it out. I'm sorry, Addison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it wasn't the hardest decision just because he was such a clear favorite and we all knew he would do well So I kind of had really no other option to be honest. Okay, let's do this. What can you do? That's part of the game, right? Addison The way I wish they would have set this up 
the two minute time penalty, that was brutal. What made it even worse was that they were just going to add it on at the end instead of giving a two minute gap between us. In my mind, I would have much rather them start the group, hold me for two minutes, and then let me take off. I really like having a rabbit to chase. So if I could have had riders to chase in front of me, I think I would have done slightly better at bringing down that two minute advantage than I did. Because honestly, I didn't do that great at it. Your race just got a little bit harder. You will receive two minutes added to your final time from this race. Mm -hmm. Understood? Yes, sir. Other than that, it's timed up, it's timed down. Are you guys ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Three, two, one. So at this point, <laughs> I'm definitely butting in way too much here, but that's what this whole episode and series is about, is me butting in and giving you my insight. When they told us about the course, the previous few days we had gotten an opportunity to actually climb up, or I myself did because the first day we went to ride on a trail called Rocket Science, started at the very top of the mountain. Everyone else took a shuttle ride up, but I decided to ride up because I wanted to know what the climbs were like. Were they punchy? Were they mellow? Were they rocky? Were they sandy? I wanted to know when and where I was able to to push if I needed to, if there was going to be a race up, so on and so forth. So when I rode up to where I thought the turnoff was for the climb here, I estimated it being approximately 25, maybe 26 minutes. So two minutes on a 25 minute climb is a fair chunk of time actually. Slightly unfair, even, you could call it. The one thing that's worrying me about the competition is that it is getting much stronger. Every time we go out, everyone's getting a little bit closer, more comfortable on the bikes. That does have me worried a little bit, honestly. And Addison bust into first place. <laughs> <laughs> we were, the three of us, Ben, Addison, and I were pretty tight for most of the climb. And then as we were cresting to the top, they pulled away a little bit on me. And uh, at that point, I kind of just focused on myself rather than like looking ahead at them and trying to catch them. The race went really well, actually. It was really, really smart on Evan's move. Evan's raced a bunch of Enduros, actually. He's, he's an incredible Enduro athlete. And he knew that if you try and go faster than you're physically able to do on a climb, you'll end up what we call blowing up. And then you're not able to recover um, for later on when you're actually racing on the downhill or something. So letting us go when he knew that he physically couldn't keep up was a very smart thing to do on Evan's move. Actually, I uh, wanted to stay up on Addison's tire. And yeah, I managed to stay right on his wheel basically the whole way. Only 200 meters to go. It was hard to see in that last scene, but at that point, I had actually gotten off for a very steep section and pushed. As I said earlier, I thought this climb was approximately 25, 26 minutes. We were four minutes, no, five minutes into the climb. So I was like, okay, I'm going to conserve some energy. I'm going to get off and push here. It was a really steep section. It was really loose. Big opportunity to spin out, fall over, this, that, and the other. What I neglected to notice was that the peak of the climb was only 200 meters in front of us. Ben noticed that while I was off pushing my bike and took full blown advantage, just as I would have. And you're gonna see it, right? I knew that I just had to like bury myself and get to the downhill first, because if you get to the downhill first, you basically won unless something happened on the down. So I just literally put my head down and just went as hard as I could and managed to get ahead of him before the down. So far in the competition, I have seized to decide who my greatest competition is. We all have extremely high strong suits, but Ben is definitely up there. A lot of these challenges thus far have played in my skill set very well, and I still have yet to come up with a win. I've come close a few times, but I'm not there. Two minutes on a 14 minute course. 
so right there, 1703.8 for the finish. And that was with two minute penalty deducted. So 15 minutes and three seconds. That is not a long course. And for there to be a two minute penalty, I think that was a little harsh. Fortunately, I'm spitting BS because it doesn't actually matter. It literally doesn't change anything except second and third placement. Other than that, not a major deal, but still two minutes was a little large percentage for what I think all of us would have liked to have seen. Maybe 30 seconds, that would have been minorly more appropriate. That's a lot. Got a little bit frustrated there. But what can you do? That's part of the game, right? Yep. Unfortunately true. Yeah, clearly uh, we see the, the top guys are really tight. The group with uh, Vlad and, uh, and the girls really tight. This is a good indicator to see as a fitness career of everyone. I was able to pass Angie and Joe before the descent. It was a good goal to like try to pick people off, I guess. Walking your bike, it could be shameful. People assume when you're walking, you're weaker, you don't have the pedaling strength or the lung capacity. I don't want to use the word weaker, but I was in a disadvantage. I knew for me, if I got off my bike, I would be slower just because I have really short legs. So I wouldn't be able to keep up to the pace of what Vlad was walking. Maybe I have uh, too much uh, PSI in my tires, but like they were like skidding a little. So I was like, I'll just walk and maybe it's going to be faster. So just like walk, it's kind of like quick, quick, quick. <laughs> Usually I'm good at any kind of physical activity. But uh, here I'm like, wow, I'm getting like destroyed. <laughs> to this note, prior to the Pink Bike Academy, Vlad had never ridden a trail bike before, owned a trail bike, obviously, and pedaled up a climb to descend afterwards. So with those three things in mind, Vlad doing what he did throughout the entire contest is pretty, pretty remarkable, actually. There's a difference between being physically strong and being able to perform well in an endurance scenario. The two do not necessarily cross over like a lot of people would assume. <laughs> it was a, it was interesting experience. The race, um, it was uh, a bit shorter than I have expected. Yeah, I think uh, Misha, it's, she kind of tapped out uh, of the back. <laughs> I tend to do better on a, a bit longer uh, uphills. Yeah! Ow! Yeah, Joe! What she's referring to when she says that she thinks she can do, she thinks she does better on longer efforts. With a 15 minute effort or a, a 12 minute effort like this climb was here, you can really fake a lot of it. Like you can dig deep into the pain cave and not worry about recovering. But after you get past a certain point, once you get into a 20, 25 minute climb, then it really shows what your endurance level is because in that type of climb, you have to be able to recover during the climb. You're not just going on all out effort. You actually have, your body has to be able to recover while you're riding, which is something that takes a long time for your body to develop and to be able to do. It takes a lot of practice to be able to do it. So, People being better at longer climbs is actually a real thing. That's not just making excuses. I consider myself to do better on longer climbs as well, which is why I was hoping it was 25 to 26 minutes instead of 12. I think I pushed myself a little bit too much at the start and I was paying off at the top of the uphill for sure. I was trying to um, calm down my breathing and calm down my um, heart rate. But I just could not calm down. While I said earlier the heart rates are just estimated because we didn't actually have proper heart rate monitors on, the heart rates were really, really exceptionally high the entire week. And they got there very easily. We were actually at a substantial amount of elevation for this. The start where the Pink Bike Academy like, like warehouse was, where that Pink Bike Academy tent is, was at 5,200, 5,300 feet. 
sorry, the meters, I'm not good on the top of my head. And the top of the mountain was actually at 72 or 7,300 feet. That's for sea level folks, like all of us, the, everyone besides myself, we're all from essentially Whistler, except for Evan, he's from Revelstoke. But everyone else was from the Whistler region, Pemberton, Vancouver, that area. So we were all almost coming from sea level. So 72 to 7,300 feet, again, meters, was a pretty big thing, which is why our heart rates were spiking so heavily, so quickly. And we were also riding pretty like intensely. The, like the tube was just like so tight and I was uh, squeezing a little bit of air through there and it was hard. It's not very easy <laughs> to be last. Yeah, yeah, yes. I push myself to the limit, so that's, that's what counts. <laughs> Good girl, you pushed hard. I might get eliminated tonight and it will be all right because I've tried my best. All right, safe to say it was a pretty tough day for the riders. Christina, I'm gonna start with you. Who didn't do as well as we expected? I think for me, it, it might have been Vlad. Like he kind of talked a big game and I think that bit him in the butt a little bit. Like why doesn't Vlad crush a test like that? Well, Vlad was the heaviest person on the bike today. So the bigger the person, the more power you have to produce to get up the hills to last in the endurance. Um, I'm gonna jump to the, the race. Uh, Fabian, you're up on the climb. Who was disappointing today? I mean, Misha, she, she, blew, she blew out uh, quite, quite far back and I was expecting maybe a bit uh, more from her from the, this morning uh, test because she was kind of uh, mid-pack. Mid I mean, yeah, it seems like uh, it was like, uh, yeah, something not expected. Well, I was, I kind of saw the riders leave from the start gate. Um, they were pedaling up the road. As soon as the pack started to break up, I think she was redlined, she was cracked at that point. She was completely red in the face. Yeah, I think, I don't honestly know, but I feel like Misha might have given all of her effort during the FTP test earlier in the day. And when you really, really dig into that red zone, I was talking about not being able to recover even after you're done with that effort, if you go too far into the red zone, or if you go far enough into the red zone, you're wrecked for the rest of the day. Now granted, all of us were pretty tired, but she may have just taken it another step further and not been able to remove enough of that lactate from her muscles. So therefore, as soon as she started pedaling, she was already on fire at the very beginning of the second challenge versus the rest of us, it took a minute or two to to start getting heated up again. She was very, very deep breathing. And I think like if you hit the wall that early into the stage or that early into a six hour enduro race, then it's gonna be a recipe for disaster. And if you're that tired off the start, then there's pretty much no recovering. And then, um, Christine, you mentioned Vlad was, you expected better of him in the FTP test, but what about on the trail? Did he kind of redeem himself there, or is it still the same story? He looked like he probably could have left a little bit more out on the track. Maybe he should have, but I think it's hard to gauge when you've never been in sort of an event or competition like that, so. I mean, clearly he is the weakest of the men. Even if he looks the strongest, he is the weakest in time and in performance. Also, you can see his, his attitude towards that, that is still positive, so even if everything is new, even if he really like having a hard time, is 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 still like keeping his heads up and trying as hard as he can, as everything is is new for him. So then we have a decision on who's going home next. Yeah, I'd say so. All right, everyone. How are those legs feeling? Actually pretty good. A little roasted, yeah. tight, a little bad. Well, I hope you still have some left in the tank. 
because it's time to start part three of today's challenge. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I got kind of stoked there. But I do was kind of hoping we were having an part. extra stage. That would have been fun, right? Make it really difficult. Julia, please step forward. How are you feeling after today's challenge? Definitely a little sore. Um, but I was pretty happy with my performance, I think, um, especially on the second challenge. I really like pushed harder than I thought I could. Well, I want to congratulate you because you very nearly won the tax challenge and you set the fastest woman's time in today's race. Congratulations. Thank you. One thing about these eliminations is a lot of people have been saying, oh, they're, they're kind of cheesy, this, that, and the other, and very reality TV show. One, this is by standards, a reality TV show. Secondly, one thing I love that they did here was Jason put a big emphasis on congratulating people when they did well. That was, uh, that was really cool to see and very appreciative, I think, from all the writers. I know I can say that from me, but the fact that they pointed out big things, big rewards and big accomplish accomplishments through the contest was really, really cool. Uh, and it, it made you feel like you were appreciated. It was, it was a good feeling. Uh, so I, I really appreciate Jason and, and all the production crew for doing, for doing that. Please take a step back. It also made the eliminations slightly less negative, which Please is cool. Forward. Ben, every time I see you, you look calm, cool, and collected. How hard are you trying during these challenges? Obviously, you gotta put some effort in, right? <laughs> um, no, yeah, definitely. Today, I gave it my all. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, doing the best you can, so definitely put it all out there. Awesome, well, you did very well during today's race. Thank you. Ben, please take a step back. Misha, Vlad, please take a step forward. You two are today's bottom riders. Misha, the judges respected your effort during the tax challenge, but unfortunately, the story wasn't the same during the race. Vlad, your result during the tax challenge was not up to our judges' expectations, and unfortunately, it was very obvious that you were way off the back during the race. I think Misha might have a bit of a struggle to stay, but she's a great rider and like she actually did really well yesterday. Like her photo was super cool. I don't want to see anybody go home at this point. I'm nervous that it could possibly be Vlad. I don't want to see him go home, but I'm kind of nervous it may happen. The rider going home tonight is... Misha, unfortunately your time at the Pink Bike Academy has come to an end. Super sad moment. Granted, I was feeling relieved because Vlad was still sticking around and he was my roommate, but he's faltered twice now. Two days in a row he's been at the bottom of the list, which is not a good look for him. He really needs to step it up next episode because it's not there quite yet. I think it speaks volumes that she didn't expect to win and then she also was almost relieved that she was getting knocked out instead of another athlete that she felt better fit the bill for the entire competition because at the end of the day it is a competition and it is a race like granted we haven't been doing a lot of racing yet the entire thing is based around enduro mountain biking which is for a large percentage of it racing in general so that was an interesting interesting side to see but what a genuine person and a pleasure to be around and as you said then she got to ride her bike a lot more offset because she wasn't sitting around waiting for the camera crews to be ready. So in that sense, not too bad. But anyways, um, let's wrap this up. Episode four, uh, it's starting to get interesting. We're starting to whittle people down. Vlad has now got two near losses in the bank. He's really got to step up next week. Uh, Julia continues to excel in the women's field. Ben absolutely crushed it today and blew everyone's minds. And then Evan stood out as an outstanding athlete, really holding his own. 
for that, I'm going to wrap it here. My name is Addison Zawada. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you haven't already, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell at the bottom. That is the notifications to let you know when I do upload. Also, you can find me on Instagram at Addison Zawada. I post to my stories pretty much all day, every day, so you know what's going on and when new videos are coming out. And you get to see a little different content. Thank you for watching this episode of Pink Bike Academy Behind the Scenes with me. Addison Zawada, good night.